Have you ever looked at an old building or monument and wondered how people living hundreds of years ago could possibly have built it? If so, you're not alone. Many scientists have asked themselves the same questions, and they haven't always been able to come up with answers. There are many examples of puzzling objects, artifacts, and buildings in the world that scientists can't adequately explain away, and we've put some of the most mystifying examples together for you in this video. We know the ancient Babylonians were exceptionally skilled mathematicians for their era, but could they have been good enough with maths to precisely track and predict the movements of Jupiter, a planet they could barely see? According to interpretations of this cuneiform script tablet, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. The 2016 reanalysis of the tablet's content suggests that it contains geometric calculations that track Jupiter's movement across the sky. That changes our understanding of history significantly. Until the tablet was re-examined, it was thought that the first accurate description of Jupiter's movements wasn't written until the 14th century in Europe. The Babylonian tablet is 1,000 years older than that. The content of the tablets make specific connections between distance, time, and velocity. In this respect, it shows that the Babylonians had a far better understanding of geometry and astronomy than the ancient Greeks of the same era, and perhaps a better understanding of the concept of planetary movement than any other civilization would have for the next millennium. How can they have been so advanced compared to the cultures around them? Speaking of things that were 1,000 years ahead of their time, here's the Pylos Combat Agate. It's a tiny ancient Greek seal stone, barely one inch long, and dates back to the Mycenaean era of Minoan Crete. The beautiful, elegantly carved seal is thought to be the first piece of art from the Aegean Bronze Age and was found inside the famous Griffin Warrior tomb close to the Palace of Nestor, where it had been for around 3,400 years. Even after so many years, the details of the image carved onto the seal are easy to make out. It features a warrior stabbing his sword through the body of an enemy while stamping on the remains of another man who's crumpled at his feet. What makes it so astonishing is that to create such detail on an object so small, a magnifying glass ought to have been required. No such device dating back to this era has ever been found on Crete, and it's not believed that the concept of magnifying glass existed to Minoans of this era. There are other ancient works of art this small and detailed, but they come from the Classical period, which is a full millennium later. If whoever made this didn't have a magnifying glass, they must have had an incredibly steady hand. The ancient Egyptians prospered through trade and innovation, and their extensive trading network explains how many items from all over the world arrived in Egypt. However, it does not explain how and why traces of nicotine and cocaine have been found in so many ancient Egyptian mummies. One third of all the mummies at the Egyptian Museum in Munich have been found to contain traces of nicotine. But before you say that the Germans must have contaminated them, traces of nicotine were also found in the stomach of King Ramses II and on the walls of the tomb of Tutankhamun. A very select few ancient mummies even show traces of cocaine in their hair and skin. The problem with all of this is that tobacco and cocaine were unknown to the Western world until Columbus obtained them from the Arawak tribe in 1492, after voyaging to the Americas. How could Egyptians have had access to those same plants 3,000 years ago? Might the Egyptians have sailed as far as America? It sounds like an absurd idea, but scientists can't think of any other way to explain the presence of the exotic substances in the mummies. Many Christian churches all over the world claim to have pieces of the cross that Jesus Christ was crucified upon locked up in their vaults, and most of those claims ought to be treated with skepticism. There's one story about the cross from 2013, though, that might merit closer examination. Archaeologists working inside the ruins of the Balatlar Church in Sinop, Turkey, came across a stone chest buried under the lowest reaches of the church. Inside the stone chest, 
was a fragment of wood that head archaeologist Golgan Koroglu immediately identified as a piece of the biblical cross. Her confidence might have been based on the fact that a Christian cross was carved into the side of the chest that the relic was found in. The discovery was the pinnacle of four years of research at the site for Gulgan's team, which had already revealed a surprise mass grave containing the remains of more than 1,000 people and ancient frescoes depicting Christ, Mary, and all of the apostles. The church was built somewhere around the year 660, and so if this really is a genuine piece of the cross, a claim that would be almost impossible to prove, Someone must have brought it to the church six centuries after the crucifixion is said to have taken place. Shortly after the Second World War, British scientist Carol Robin Evans was contacted by a Polish professor named Lalodolf, who claimed to have a bizarre artifact to show him. This strange stone sun disk, said to be 12,000 years old, has since become known as the Lalodov Plate. If we take Professor Lalodov's story at face value, it was acquired from the Zopa people of Musori in northern India, who used it for religious rites. It's the inscriptions on the disc that got Lalodov so excited, aside from the fact that there's what appears to be a fair representation of a spiral-shaped galaxy. There's also a humanoid figure that looks a lot like the classic depiction of a gray alien. The spiral galaxy shape is consistent with other stone artifacts that have been found elsewhere in India, as well as Peru and ancient Egypt. The UFO enthusiasts among us tell us that this is clear evidence of alien visitation during ancient times, but it's worth bearing in mind that the shape of a spiral was often used to signify energy in ancient artifacts and carvings. UFO conspiracy theorists often claim inexplicable ancient artifacts as evidence of aliens visiting the human race. They've done the same thing with the strange statuettes and figurines left behind by the mysterious Hongshan culture. We know almost nothing about this ancient civilization other than the fact that they lived during the Neolithic era, and the base of their people was close to the Liao River in China. The only other thing we know about them for sure is that they were tremendously adept at working with jade to make statues. All of the strange figures are humanoid in their basic shape, but there's no way you'd call any of them human. Their actual form is open to interpretation. Some people look at them and see dragons. Others see goats or deer or even horned beasts. One or two of them look slightly like the same classic gray alien we saw on the Lalodov plate. It's likely that we simply lack the necessary understanding of the Hongshan people to interpret their works of art correctly, but it is odd that the same shapes keep reappearing all over the world. The modern beauty industry makes billions of dollars in revenue each year, and we think of interest in things such as face creams and beauty products as a modern conceit. We're wrong to do that, though because humans have apparently been trying to beautify themselves for as long as they've been sentient. Here's what appears to be some proof in the shape of a 2,000-year-old tin that was discovered in an ancient Roman temple in London. Because of its location, it was initially assumed to be an ointment used in religious ceremonies, but analysis of its ingredients has since revealed that it contains starch, animal fat, and tin for pigmentation. In other words, it's a humble face cream. The finger marks of the last person to use it are even still visible in the cream's hardened residue. This cream would actually have been better for the wearer than similar products that have been found in Italy. The Roman-made creams of the time used lead instead of tin, but lead wasn't readily available in the British Isles, and so tin was used as a substitute. The pyramids of Egypt might get all the fame from all the visitors, but they are far from being the only notable ancient pyramids in the world. There's also the site of the pyramids of Sona in the Brazov district of Romania, and they're no less mysterious than the Egyptian variants. From a distance, they look more like hills or grassy mounds than pyramids, but there's nothing natural about the way they were formed. These earthen structures were made by human hands somewhere around 3,000 years ago, and their purpose is unknown. 
During the early 21st century, a major expedition came here with modern technology in an attempt to discover more about their origin and their purpose. But they were forced to leave almost empty-handed when the pyramids steadfastly refused to give up their secrets. They're geometrically precise in their arrangement, with eight pyramids split into two lines of four at exact intervals. But the secret of their purpose must have died with whichever people built them. The tallest of them, which stands 30 feet high, might have been a burial chamber, but really, that's nothing more than a guess. Ireland is well known for its ancient and historical artifacts and monuments, but perhaps none of them are as hard to explain or understand as the Ballyshannon Sun Disk. This small disk, made of an improbably thin gold foil, is thought to be the oldest example of sheet gold work not just in Ireland, but also in all of the British Isles. When you consider the long history of those islands, that's a remarkable fact. Written records from the date of the discovery of the sun disk in 1669 are frustratingly brief and limited, but they suggest that the disk was found inside the tomb of a man described as having giant stature. That single statement has gone on to feed a whole belief system in Ireland that says literal giants once roamed the land. The Ballyshannon disc is about 4,000 years old, with a cross at the center surrounded by circles and spiral shapes. The term sun disc is a group label that's applied to any object that resembles this. In reality, we don't have the first clue about what its purpose might have been, or even if it was anything more than a simple decoration. There are dozens of places around the world that claim to be connected to the myth of Atlantis. One such place is the dramatically named Giant's Grave of Codovecchio in Arzacina, Italy. Despite their grand name, it's unlikely that the tombs here were built for giants. Instead, it's believed that they're megalithic gallery graves, which were briefly used as public tombs and monuments during the Bronze Age. These particular megaliths were built by the Nuragic civilization, who lived in Sardinia a little over 2,000 years ago and survived until the second century. Experts can't agree on whether the tomb's size meant that they functioned as mass graves or whether the interior corridors were intended as representations of the soul's journey to the afterlife. The largest single stone slab here is more than 100 feet tall, so it's not surprising that some people prefer to cling to the belief that the graves really were built for giants. The connection to Atlantis comes from a book written by Sergio Frau in 2002, in which he claims that the Nuragic civilization vanished after a tsunami that left behind almost nothing other than these enigmatic stones. Mother Shipton's cave in Knaresborough, England, with its legendary so-called petrifying well, is a wonderful place to visit if you enjoy spectacular sights and tales of the fantastical. The smooth, polished-looking stone formation has long been associated with witchcraft in the local area and is said to have once been the home of a woman who was both a witch and a prophet. Her name, unsurprisingly, was Mother Shipton. During Tudor times, people genuinely believed her to be clairvoyant, although her prediction that the world would end in 1881 turned out to be way off the mark. People have been visiting her cave since the 17th century to marvel at the well, which is said to have the power to turn people to stone after being cursed by Mother Shipton in one of her final acts. Until modern science came along to spoil the party, the story appeared to be true. Objects left in the well would slowly turn to stone over a period of around three months. Science says that this has more to do with the process of evaporation coupled with an extremely high mineral concentration inside the well. But who's to say Mother Shipton didn't put the minerals there herself? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.